Los Angeles, this is Dirty Dirty Jokes. With your host for the evening, the undisputed king of kinky comedy, the godfather of Dirty Dirty Jokes, Mr. Red Fox. And starring the hoodlum of humor, Mr. Andrew Dice Clay. What, what do you mean bisexual? Either suck dick or you don't. Featuring the salt and the smut, Mr. Bob Schimmel. Guys really love him, though. You never met a guy where a girl goes, hey, you want a blowjob? Nah. And the 31-liner wonder man, Mr. Jackie Martling. See, it's hard to tell stories about animals because you get confused because if a sheep is a ram and a mule's an ass, how come a ram and the ass is a goose, right? And the Rolls Royce of ranch, Ronaldo Ray. I dig a little 68. You do me and I owe you one. With the lovely Miss Lotus Weinstock who talks to you ladies about the subtle art of attracting that special man. <laughs> and a rare guest appearance by John Wayne, also known as Mr. Danny Johnston. Oh, buenos nachos, scumbags. <laughs> For this special show, Red Fox looked high and low for the most offensive and outrageously funny comics anywhere. Let's look at this rising star, the Sultan of Smut, Bob Schimmel. Hey, Bob Schimmel! Well, this is a great evening. I was kind of depressed today. I read in the newspaper this morning that people could actually make money donating sperm to sperm banks. And that really bothered me because last year alone I let five, six hundred dollars slip through my fingers. <laughs> Having problems with my wife. She showed me an article in the Cosmo magazine about the G-spot. Have you heard about this? They found a new spot on the woman's body that's supposed to produce the most unbelievable orgasm. It's supposed to last like 30 minutes. What does the guy do for 30 minutes? What, do you go to 7-Eleven, get a six-pack? Some cigarettes, you come back, she's not done yet? So he went to a marriage counselor, he said, what you gotta do is take your wife to one of these adult toy stores and get some marital aids and go home and experiment with them and broaden your sex life. My wife found a vibrator that takes like 20 D-cell batteries. You could jumpstart your fucking car with this thing. <laughs> Why do people say excuse me after they fart? Wouldn't it be better if they said look out before they did it? <laughs> and then they say stuff like, what did you eat today? What, is that gonna make a difference now? <laughs> yeah, I ate a Taco Bell. You wanna help me put the wallpaper back up? Remember a few years ago, if you went to the doctor and he told you you had the clap, you went, oh, God, I can't believe it. Now when they tell you that, you go, whoosh. <laughs> they said they might have a cure for herpes, but they have to test it out on rats first. How do they give a rat herpes? What do they tell some girl at the clinic? Look, you already got the herpes. Fuck the rat. Come on. <laughs> Might be a cure in it for me. Actually, animal sex is not funny. I had a friend once to fuck the dog, and it was the most disgusting thing I ever watched. <laughs> I was reading Penthouse magazine today. They have weird ads in Penthouse for all the sex aids you could send away for. Like Mr. Big Cream. You rub it on your dick, and your dick gets bigger. Wouldn't your hands get bigger, too? <laughs> What else do they sell? Vibrating butt plugs. Who invented this? Who took it to the patent office? But you know, ladies and gentlemen, the funny thing about blowjobs... Guys love blowjobs. The only thing they don't like about them is when you're all done and the girl cuddles up to you and goes, come here, sweetheart. Don't you want a little wine or something first? How about a cigarette? You don't smoke? Start smoking. And the sick thing is, you know, you're gonna have to do it, because if you don't, you know she'll think, that's real nice. He wants me to suck his dick, but he won't kiss me. How can I get even with him? And you find out, because when you kiss her, you find out she hasn't swallowed it yet.
I wanted to try anal sex with my wife. I said, why don't you lay on your stomach and let me go in the other way? And she pulled out a dildo and said, let me do you first. <laughs> I didn't like it. I have a hard enough time with a rectal thermometer. Who invented that? Mommy, I don't feel good. Let me stick this glass rod up your ass. Now how do you feel? Worse. Let me take it out. Now how do you feel? Better. See, it works. When do people decide they're gonna be gay? What, are you walking down the street one day and say, you know, I think I'd like a dick up my ass. That sounds like a good idea. What do you eat the sizzler, you have a steak, a baked potato, a glass of wine, a cigarette. You don't really top this evening off. I think a dick up the ass. I... It's not on the menu. Where do I find that? You ever take a shit and look at it and it looks like someone you know? Do you tell them? You ever wonder what determines whether it's going to be two, three pieces or that one long one that comes up the side of the toilet? It always happens at somebody else's house. And they don't have a brush. Remember when you were a little kid, how big your dad's dick used to look? I think either you're hung or you're hung up about it, one or the other. It's true. A guy can show a picture of a naked girl to his girlfriend, like in a Playboy magazine, and say, you don't you think she's pretty? And the girl say, yeah, she's got a nice face or pretty hair or something. But if a girl shows a picture of a naked guy to her boyfriend, and the guy's got a really big dick, like four or five inches, <laughs> they never have anything positive to say about it. I was at somebody's house, they're showing a picture of John Holmes. This guy looks like a ride at Magic Mountain. <laughs> and the husband goes, yeah, it's big, but it doesn't get completely hard. <laughs> Who gives a shit? What are they talking about? Although you read the letters in Penthouse from the, that say, you know, I've been with the guys with the big dicks, and to tell you the truth, I'd rather have a warm, loving, sensitive man with a five-inch penis than a man with a nine-inch penis. Women write these, they don't write these letters. Men write them, and they sign women's names to them. I think that's how that works. My wife wants to get a cat for a pet. I like dogs, they're a lot more fun. You can play frisbee with them, you go jogging with a dog. She said, cats are better than dogs, because when a dog has to go to the bathroom at three in the morning and has to wake you up, you have to get up, you have to let the dog out, you have to wait till he's done, you have to let him back in. When a cat has to go, they don't bother anybody. They just shit in a box. I don't like the way that sounds, shit in a box. Sounds like something new at McDonald's. She said that cats are so intelligent, you could actually teach them to go on the toilet. Yeah, and then when you have to go, the cat's in there. <laughs> Morris, how long are you gonna be? Forget it, where's the box? <laughs> then you use the box and your friends come over and go, what do you got, a mountain lion for a pet here? <laughs> I was talking to this guy today, he was out with this girl last night. He said, yeah, I fucked the shit out of her. You know, I never want to see anything like this. <laughs> sound good to me. I fucked their brains out. Ugh. I think I know a few of these girls. I like when you're with a girl and a guy goes, hey, fuck her once for me. What do you say? Oh, and this is for a friend of mine. When I reached puberty, when I was like 19, my mom said, Bob, you're going to be getting these funny feelings pretty soon, and I just want you to know that it's normal to want to play with yourself. And I said, Ma, you're a sick fuck. Get out of here, will you? <laughs> you don't need your mother's permission to do this. And I could never do it because I'm afraid of dying an embarrassing death. With my luck, I'd be in bed with like 12 or 13 penthouse magazines. Just at that magic moment, a blood vessel would burst in my head and I'd die with my dick in my hand. <laughs> Parents would come home with company. This is Robert's room. <gasps> <gasps> so tiny. I met this girl, we went out one night. She said, you want to have the most unbelievable orgasm in your life? You let somebody stick a knotted rag up your ass. And just when you're ready to come, you have them pull it out. So I said, okay, I'm willing to try anything once. Until I see her taking the rag out of the trunk of her car. So I said, I don't want the rag. She said, you know what else is just as good? You let somebody stick a string of beads up your ass. I said, okay. So I'm at the hospital getting the beads removed. And the doctor pulled the string and I came like a motherfucker. It was unbelievable. <laughs> well, 
Well, you guys have been a great crowd. You got a great show coming up for you. It's been a real pleasure working here, especially meeting the king, Red Fox. He's definitely the ultimate. Thank you very much. All right. That was Bob Shovel. Uh, next is a real good friend of mine from way back. He's a writer, a producer, and a comedian. He's done a lot of work in the industry. He has three albums, and you might have one of them. He may be the best you've ever heard, O-R-R. We call him the Rolls Royce of Dirty Comedy. His latest album is Ronaldo Ray Live. Ronaldo Ray. <laughs> Expected a Mexican, didn't you? <laughs> this name has fucked me up all my life. I know I'm weird, I look weird. When I was growing up, I was weird, and I knew it because people would look at me and say, he weird. <laughs> and see, it's rough growing up in the ghetto, you know, when you're a high yellow redhead, freckle face, black Indian country boy with a Mexican name. <laughs> and I look in the mirror, I know we didn't come from Africa looking like this. <laughs> Somebody fucked around. Has either been a coon in the barnyard, a taco in the ham hocks, or a cracker in the cookie jar. <laughs> but that's all right. I went to New York to check out my family tree, and I hate New York. Any New Yorkers in here? Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> I wish King Kong had eaten that big raggedy motherfucker up. <laughs> I hate New York. I met my ex-wife in New York. I thought that a woman walked in looked just like my ex-wife tonight. Scared the shit out of me. Cause I ain't paid no alimony. I don't believe in alimony. That's like paying for a car that you can't drive. If I ever send a woman some alimony, bitch better send me some pussy back in the mail. I was in a bar the other day, a drunk come in, walked up to the bartender, he's all disheveled. For you dropouts, that's fucked up. <laughs> he reproached the bartender, he said, bartender, give me a drink quick, man. <laughs> bartender said, what's your problem? He said, man, I was standing on the corner, minding my own self in there. <laughs> Big truck come by, knocked my thing off. Knocked my thing right out of my hand. <laughs> thing slid down in the gutter, goddamn. Bartender said, stupid, ain't no truck knocked your thing off. He said, swear to God, man. I picked it up and put it in my pocket. Got it right here, I show you my thing. Drunk, drunk, you know. Bartender said, stupid, that ain't your thing. That's an old cigar. Wrong pocket. <laughs> See, man, my thing. Drugs and knock my shit out of my head. <laughs> Bartender say, stupid, that's another old cigar. <laughs> oh, my God. I smoked my dick. <laughs> I'm, I'm a family man. I was married three times to three Zodiac freaks. A Cancer, a Scorpio, and a Sagittarius Crabby ass. I'm so sick of that Zodiac shit. What's your sign? What dollar sign, bitch? Give it up. <laughs> Women are so much into this shit, it's sickening. Other night, I'm in the throes of passion, approaching orgasmic bliss with one of them Scorpio freaks. Yeah, right on, mama. And this girl said, Ronaldo, what's your sign? I said, Aquarius, mama. She said, oh my God, we're not compatible. I said, Leo, Tar, alligator, goddamn. 
Bring the pussy back. <laughs> Said, I was married to three of them freaks, man. All three of my wives treated me bad. All three of them died very seriously. First wife died from mushroom poison. Second wife died from mushroom poison. Third wife died from a fractured skull. This bitch wouldn't eat the mushroom. She had to go. Name my only son Herman Jr. And my name ain't even Herman. Mailman was named Herman. I moved from Kansas City to Cleveland to L.A. Each place I got the same damn mailman. I know ain't no route that big. Seriously, I didn't eat no pussy. I thought white boys ate pussy because they had little bitty joints. Now that's what we grew up thinking. Then we saw Deep Throat and saw the dick on that boy, you know. I said, he must have colored blood. <laughs> See, but now we know white boys ate pussy cause they're good. We catching up now. I'm doing my share. And hope to make a giant step for the brothers tonight. I've become a freak. I went to Berkeley. Our textbook was Anthology of a Freak, written by Billy Jane King. That's my girl. I think Billy Joe was a man about this shit. When they put the finger on her, she stood up and said, I ate the pussy. But the bitch will not get this Malibu house. Ain't no pussy that good. Now just roll your ass on out of here. <laughs> well, gang, our time is limited. And so they told me, I got, oh, isn't this wonderful shit? I want to say thanks. You're some nice motherfuckers. Uh, time is limited. I got to go. But I want to say I love you, sweet dreams. Uh, good night, ladies. Good luck, dudes. If your luck is bad, Fuck it. <laughs> Give me a great digger. Ronaldo Ray. Ronaldo. Come on out. Hey, Ronaldo Ray. Let me know you. Let me know you. Thank you very much. Next, we'd like to introduce the inventor of the dollar dirty joke. We'd like to welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Jackie Martin. Give him a great big round here. Jackie Martin. So guys getting married on Saturday. Friday night, his friends take him out, get him waylaid, parlayed, rollaid, mislaid, up, down, up, bing, bang, boom, forget his pecker is a mangled mess. You know what to do. He takes two popsicle sticks, puts them there, wrapped in adhesive tape. Next day he gets married. Here they are in the honeymoon suite. She walks out stark naked. She says, look, honey, untouched by human hands. He got to think quick. He pulls down his pants and says, look, huh, not even out of the crate. <laughs> <laughs> so a guy's going to the best whorehouse in the entire world at 448 West 48th Street, Manhattan. He has a few beers. By accident, goes to 884 West 84th Street. It's a podiatrist's office. He walks in, the nurse says, go behind the curtain and stick it out through the hall. So he does it. She goes, what? She says, that's not a foot. He says, I didn't know there was a minimum. <laughs> so a college professor goes to bed with his wife. He's not tired. She's going to stay awake and read while she goes to sleep. So he's reading. Every once in a while, he reaches over and tickles her on the fun spot. She says, will you stop that? Will you stop reaching over here and teasing me like that? He says, I'm not teasing you, I'm, wet I'm wetting my fingers so I can turn the page. <laughs> you think that's tough on you? I tried that stunt with my old lady. Next day, she signed me up for Evelyn Wood Speed Reading. <laughs> lady gets on a bus. She goes like this. Bus driver goes like this. She goes like this. He goes like this. 
She goes like this. He goes like this. She goes like this. The guy in the front says, who is that? Bus driver says, oh, lady has a little trouble hearing, so we communicate visually. She said, you're going downtown? I said, uptown. She said, you're going to stop? I said, it's express. She said, you're going by a dairy farm? I said, the ballpark. She said, shit, I'm on the wrong bus. <laughs> so a guy's got a big, fat wife. She gets out of the shower, sits on the pot, and gets stuck. <laughs> So he calls the plumber, then he realizes that she's sitting there naked, he can't have this, so he gets his bowl of derby and puts it on her lap to cover up home base. <laughs> the plumber shows up, walks in, takes one look, he says, well, Mac, he says, I think I could save your wife, but the guy in the hat's a goner. <laughs> the lady's playing golf, she gets hit in the ass really hard with a golf ball. She goes to the doctor, he says, where were you hit? She says, between the first and the second hole. <laughs> he says, that doesn't leave a lot of room for the band-aid. <laughs> Two guys on the elevator, elevator operators is going down, just conversing. <laughs> How about the girl goes to the gynecologist, he examines her, he says, you have acute vaginitis. She says, thank you. <laughs> guy goes on a date, puts in his finger, she says, put in another finger. He says, what do you want to do, whistle? What do you call a lesbian that drives a delivery truck full of dildos? A dick van bank. <laughs> I wasn't always hip to cocaine. The first time a guy told me he just did a toot, I held my breath and left the room. It's not easy to laugh at that one because of the way... We're all raised to think that girls don't do those, so we're in mixed company, so we can't giggle at that, right? But girls do bluters. You know they do. The greatest joke is the guy picks up a girl for a date, and on the way out to the car, she realized she has to crack a rat. That's to toss a boom, right? So on the way out to the car, she figures she'll get in, and while he's walking around, she can tug a rug. Everything will be fine. So they go out to the car, he opens the door, she gets in, he's walking around, she lifts a leg and blows a hole in her parachute. Bravo! <laughs> he gets in, he says, by the way, dear, I'd like to meet the couple we're doubling with. <laughs> so the Polish couple's walk along, there's a black couple with their baby. The Polish guy turns to his wife and says, you know, we have six children of our own, we've never been able to have a black child. She says, you know, I couldn't help but notice, why don't you ask some advice? He says, that's a good idea. He goes over to the black couple and says, your kid's so cute. <laughs> We have six children of our own. We've never been able to have a black child. The black guy's like... <laughs> she says, yeah, maybe give us some advice. The black guy says, well, is it about that long? The Polish guy says, oh, no, maybe yo, hey, like this. <laughs> well, it's about that big around. <laughs> oh, no, no. He's like, yo, hey. Is that the problem? You letting in too much light. <laughs> You don't mind if I sit down, do you? So this girl told me this joke down, down in that Savannah. Couple gets married and they're going to Dallas for the honeymoon. She says, come on, let's get it on. He says, uh-uh, not until we get to Dallas. She says, come on, we're married. I won't get it on now. He says, not until we get to Dallas. She says, I'll compromise with you. We'll do it on the plane. Get on the plane? She says, yeah, you just take it out. And I'll lift up my dress, and I... have you done that? <laughs> She's looking at me like, if you get lost, I'll tell you what's next. <laughs> she says, you just take it out, and I'll lift up my dress, and I'll sit on it, and nobody will know. He says, well, what about when we get going? She says, you leave everything to me. So they get on the plane, and he takes it out, and she lifts up her dress, and she sits on it. So many ladies feel this, huh? <laughs> What am I laughing at? So do I. She sits on it. She says to the girl in front of her, she says, Are you going to Dallas? Oh. <laughs> Are you going to Dallas? Oh. Are you going to Dallas? Lady goes for her first golf lesson. The pro says you gotta hold the club like you hold your husband's organ. She takes the glove, hits the ball. He says, beautiful, perfect shot, right down the fairway. Now I'll take the club out of your mouth, put it in your hands, we'll go for distance. <laughs> I happen to like oral sex myself. I'm not crazy about the view. That's why pubic hair is curly, so it won't poke you in the eye, right? <laughs>
Bubbles in the living room. He says, you're dry tonight. She says, you're licking the rug. <laughs> you were great. I'm Jackie Marley. Good night. Thank you. Unique isn't the word for this next guy. Meet our own tough and dirty guy, Andy Dice Clay. Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet, eating her curds and whey. Long came a spidey, sat down beside her, said, Hey, what's in the bowl, bitch? <laughs> Roses are red, violets are blue, I'm a schizophrenic. So am I. <laughs> Jack and Jill went up the hill, both with a buck and a quarter. Jill came down with 250. They didn't go for no water. <laughs> was an old lady, lived in a shoe. She had so many kids, she didn't know what to do. So she started giving head. <laughs> Worked out. Jack, be nimble. Jack, be quick. Jack jumped over a candlestick. How impressive. But you see, Jack wasn't so nimble. And Jack's just not that quick. So now poor Jack's in the hospital. With a burnt fucking dick. <laughs> old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her old dog a bone. She bent over. Rover took over, right? She got a bone of her own. I don't know. I mean, little Bo Peep lost the sheep. Big fucking deal. I lost my wallet. Nobody's talking about me. Screw that sleazy whore already. I mean, no one she loses her virginity. That's a story. But what I want to know is who's this guy, Dr. Seuss? Whoever gave this guy a license to practice medicine? He's got one fish, two fish, a red fish, a blue fish. He's got ten apples up on top, eats green eggs and ham, and keeps his cat in his hat. Now, I don't know about you people, but uh, <laughs> this guy ain't shoving no thermometer up my ass. <laughs> I don't need that kind of pressure from nobody. <laughs> it's enough I live up here in Hollywood, right? Yeah, great place. You know, they got a lot of gay people up here. You notice that? They're all over the place. It's like a fungus. You know what I'm talking They're all, I'm not kidding. It's like you got herpes, AIDS, and phagitis. You know what I'm saying? They come from Fagatroyd. They're not from this planet, right? They march up and down Santa Monica Boulevard with T-shirts on. I want money for AIDS. Well, I want money for a new fucking car. I ain't going up and down the street, right? Get a job, butt fucker, okay? Find something else you like. I mean, personally, I couldn't see having some guy rip my rectum to shreds and turn around and say, I love you. <laughs> Why don't you just put a bullet in my head while you're at it? I ain't gonna be able to shit for three months as it is. <laughs> they don't know if they want to be called gays, homosexuals, fairies. I call them cocksuckers. I think it spells it out. <laughs> What's the big debate about? They got this Richard Simmons, the 1983 Vaseline poster boy. You see this guy yet? It's the bug up his ass already. And then I read recently, this uh, really excited me. David Bowie comes out with a statement saying he's not gay anymore. He gave it up. What'd he do, go to the Schick Center for three weeks, right? I mean, I know this guy sees a Boy Scout troop, he buckles to his knees, you know what I'm saying? I quit cigarettes too, okay, pal? You need a dick in your mouth, that's your problem. I don't know. But it's not really the faggots that piss me off. I even respect them a little. Because they've made a decision with their lives. Not like these bisexuals. What do these guys wake up in the morning and flip a coin, right? Heads I want, hair pie, tails. I'll take balls across the nose, right? This ain't a menu, you know what I'm saying? And you know what really cracks me up? 
You know, really, the punchline, when they finally do get this AIDS disease, they can't figure out where it comes from. They have no idea. If you're walking around with shit on your dick every day, you're bound to pick something up, you know what I'm saying? This ain't a 24-hour virus here, you know what I mean? You ain't fucking normal. What do you mean you can't figure it out? You know, you need the Hershey Highway. That's your problem. <laughs> Especially when they can't come up with a, with a cure the next day. You know what I'm saying? Think maybe this is God's way of saying, hey, fellas, this ain't right. This ain't the combination I picked out. What are you, fucking blind? I guess if I had to bang somebody in the ass, I'd go with Reagan. <laughs> I'm gonna have another cigarette. I love to smoke. I started smoking at the Schick Center. <laughs> it didn't work for me either. Yeah, how you doing? You seem like a nice girl. You know, uh, you're a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Giving the girl a comp No, I'm a fucking pig. I'll do it any way you want. <laughs> No, you're cute, really. You're a cute girl. What's your name? Any idea? <laughs> Up to you. No, what's your name? Leela E. Washington. Okay. Beautiful. That's a beautiful name. You're a cute girl. Nice face. Leprosy. <laughs> no, I'm you. no, she is a nice girl. Yeah. No, she's all right. You with her? No. No? Really? You just met him, huh? No, you're cute, really. Anyway. No, I love chicks, you know, especially tits. I'm big on tits. Big tits, little tits, tits that skip and hop. A happy tit. A sad tit. A tit used as a mop by Edgar Allan Poe. See, you see the magic of a tit. There's magic in tits. You guys don't know this. You see, the magic of a tit is when you touch them and they shake, <laughs> you pop a boner. <laughs> Works out great. Right? Remember when they first came out with the heart on you? Remember that? Like in the third, fourth grade, all of a sudden you're leaning over like the hunchback of Notre Dame. And the teacher goes, come on up to the board. And you're sitting there like, <laughs> no, I don't think so, honey. No, not today, okay? You're the teacher. You figure it out, all right? I got some kind of ligament over here. I don't know what's going on. Things like alien, it's banging into the desk next to me. I don't know what's happening. But then you grow up, you learn to accept the hard on, to deal with it, to control it, to master it. Especially that morning hard on. I'll put that up against that Ginsu knife any day. <laughs> yeah, it'll slice, it'll dice, it'll pump your car up if you got a flat tire also. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, honey, hang your laundry, right? I'm shaving over here. <laughs> I don't know. You see, when you first meet a girl, they're always on diets. I don't care if they weigh six ounces, they're on a diet. Then you ask them out, where do they want to go? Eat, right? Once you got them in the restaurant, they chain themselves to the fucking tables. You can't get them out of there. They're like vultures, right? They're shoving breadsticks in their pocket on the way out, right? So you take them out, you spend 35, 40 bucks plus tire wear. Everything counts, right? You know what I'm talking You spend all this cash, and what do you get at the end of the night? A kiss on the cheek? Fellas, let's face it. We could get that from our wives, right? <laughs> I mean, a kiss on the cheek was cute five, ten years ago. You go on a first date, get a kiss on the cheek. I don't know, maybe a little grinding action. It kept you coming back. <laughs> but you see, today women are liberated. It's a whole new ball game. It's like on a first date, they say things like, Well, I don't think we should have intercourse. But I'll blow you. I didn't make the rules, I just abide by them, really. You know? But don't think I'm, I'm putting women down. I love women, I do. They're cute, they got a lot of cute quirks. Like, why is it that every time a girl goes to the bathroom, they take along their pocketbook? What, they shit in a bag? They take along a pocketbook and an extra girlfriend. What's the extra girlfriend there for? Enthusiasm. Go ahead, honey, you can do it, go ahead. Yeah, and load a truck. Go ahead, pee like a racer, son. Yeah, back it up a little. I gotta get a Polaroid of this. This is beautiful. And I thought Mrs. Cleaver had the beaver. Was I mistaken? Really? And then with their orgasms. Forget it. They don't want one. 
They want 15, 20 at a clip, right? A guy has one, he sleeps till Christmas, right? Chick has one, she's bringing in the troops. It don't end with them. I mean, let's face it, right? A guy, you crank him up in five minutes, it's over, right? But with a chick, when you go down there, you need scuba gear. You ain't going down for five minutes. You need a machete just to get through the shrubbery, you know what I'm saying? Then you gotta go like on a four-day manhunt, right? You gotta find some G-spot behind door number three, right? There's some guy in a boat going to Europe, you gotta track him his ass down, right? And after eight hours of working like a dog just to hear that one little, uh, they wanna turn around and say, talk to me. Talk to you? I need fucking oxygen, honey, okay? You wanna talk, call your mom, get me to a hospital. I lost an arm in there, for God's sake. With the positions, you gotta fold them, stretch them, bend them. You gotta be fucking Gumby to make love today. You gotta hang them from a chandelier with a pickle in their mouth to get them off, right? Know, with all the protection they got shoved in there today, they got all IOUs, coils, dash. I feel like I'm fucking a Chevy half the time. I just don't need that kind of pressure, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. You caught that joke, good. Now I stick to the one-night stand. Anybody here ever have a one-night stand? <laughs> You're all full of shit. I think it's beautiful, a one-night stand. Here's my impression of a one-night stand. Ugh! Get out. What else, right there? Anybody see E.T., the extra testicle? Anybody see that movie? What kind of movie is this to show human beings, you know? I don't know, what nine-year-old kid walks out into the middle of the woods and starts playing handball with this half mongoloid, half termite, like it's a long-lost cousin? <laughs> this kid don't blink an eye. He's making blood brothers, bringing them home for beer, meet the family, stay over for the weekend. Me, I'd be standing out there with a fucking bazooka, you know what I mean? Yeah, you gotta make a phone call. Get the fuck out of the neighborhood. Yeah, put E.T. in my neighborhood for five minutes, right? My neighborhood, you walk into the grocery store, you pick up the lid, you go, parquet? Goes, fuck you. <laughs> I gotta say butter one more time, somebody's getting hurt, right? And then I go home, I turn on HBO, and I see this elephant man. What is this self-pity bullshit? <laughs> for three and a half hours, I'm sitting there, watching this freak of fucking nature walk around going, I'm not an animal. <laughs> and I'm saying, no. <laughs> Well, you ain't no fucking Burt Reynolds, pal, okay? Not an animal. The guy's got a face like a snatch. What do you mean he's not an animal? I could pick him out of a lineup, you know what I'm saying? You don't see too many people like this walking around. Yeah, maybe in 7-Eleven you got a couple, but uh, that's what happened there. You've been a great audience. Good night. Andy Dice Clay, very funny guy. Some of the finest comedians in the world are women. Remember LaWanda Page as Aunt Esther? Uh, pardon me. This next young woman you might have seen on TV when she emceed the first annual Mr. Tush contest on Real People. Her name is Lotus Weinstock. Let's go. Lotus. Hi! Quick question, how many people here read the Enquirer, say aye? Less than the Bible, I think we're on the right track. It's amazing to me, it's the biggest selling paper in the universe and no one ever admits they read it. I actually have an Enquirer class every Thursday. <laughs> I'm kidding, that's my business. I, I do read the Enquirer at the check stands because I never pay for it. But they actually have some very enlightening articles in there. I've, I've been reading some articles in the behavioral science area. I caught one not so long ago written by three men who had PhDs. Collectively, they had 933 years of schooling and they were willing to give it to me in a page. I'd like to give it to you in a few minutes. <laughs> Ready for this? Oh. How to use body signals a man can't resist. When it comes to attracting that special man, there's an easy way to do it. Who knew? You simply use 10 body language signals to communicate your interest in him and make him yours, say the experts. The 10 tips are number one, while conversing, turn an open palm towards him. This 
signals, you're open to his advances. <laughs> Number two, lick your lips. <laughs> While keeping an open palm. Licking the lips is a definite flirtatious gesture, notes body language expert, Julius Fast. Number three, play with your hair. Touch your hair or twist a lock between your fingers, suggests Dr. Adam Kendon, visiting professor of anthropology at Connecticut College. Now keep an open palm while you're playing with your hair, okay? These things are most effective if they're all done together. Now we're playing with the hair, licking the lips, and always Keeping that open palm, okay? <laughs> now we get into some very insightful stuff. Show off your curves. Twist your body in such a way that the breasts are made slightly more prominent. Give me an inch here, okay? <laughs> and there's a kind of wiggle in the hips. You ready for number six? This is really an insight. Touch his thigh. Oh, God, I never would have thought of that. When a woman touches a man's thigh, even if she's just met him at a party, it is signaling, I am very interested in you, no shit Sherlock. <laughs> okay, now keep an open palm while you're touching his thigh. This next one is my personal favorite. Give him that special look. This is done by closing your eyelids and then when you open them again, your eyes are looking elsewhere. Okay, now caress your own body. Give him a hint or an essentialist mood by drawing attention to your own body. <laughs> if while talking to a man, a woman moves her hand down her thigh or touches the top of her breast, it can be a way of saying this might lead to something. <laughs> now try to keep an open palm while you're touching your breast. Let's run it all down. We're drawing attention to our own body. We're giving him that special look. We're touching his thigh. We're playing with that hair. We're licking those lips. And we are always keeping that open palm. Okay, now, get it all going at once. If he still hasn't noticed you, Come in for the kill. <laughs> Touch an inanimate object as you talk to him. Could I, can I borrow you? <laughs> I know you won't believe this but I'm really interested in you. We have a singing group now in the living room, but they're not exactly a Sunday school choir. They're called Bird and McDonald. Uh, give a listen to There was an old farmer who lived by a rock. He sat in the meadow, was shaking his fist at some boys who were down by the creek. Their feet in the water, their hands on their marbles and playthings, and in days of yore, there came a young lady. She looked like a pretty young creature. She sat on the grass. She pulled up her dresses and showed us her ruffles and laces and white puppy and whack. She said she was learning a new way to bring up her children and learn them to knit. While the boys in the barn 
yard were shoveling refuse and litter from yesterday's hunt. While the girl in the meadow was rubbing her eyes at the fellows, as girls sometimes do, to make it quite clear that she wanted to go for a nice pleasant stroll on the grass. Then hurry back home for a nice piece of ice cream and cake that's the three layers tall. And after dessert she was ready to go for another walk down by the dock with any young man with a sizable roll of one hundreds and a big bulge up front. If he'd ask politely she'd show him her little pet dog who was subject to fits. And maybe she'd let him grab hold of her small tender hands with a movement so quick. And she'd bend on over and suck on his soda so sweetly till she finished it. Then pull down her panties to rub on her hip that she bruised when she ran down the halls. Cause he tried to force her to lick on his candy so tasty made of butterscotch. And then he spread whipped cream all over her cookies that she had been baking all night. If you think this is dirty, you're fucking well right. Thank you very much, folks. The next fella beat out a lot of stiff competition to win the first International Stand-Up Comics Award. Let's welcome him, folks, Denny Johnston. Denny! Hi, uh, my name's uh, Joe Bob Davis. I'm president of the Carpenters Union of Bakersfield, California. And I have several safety tips for you. When cutting two by fours with a goddamn skill saw, make sure that you always wear a pair of these here safety gogglers. Even though they do make you look like a real fucking asshole. <laughs> Then uh, safety tip number two. Don't ever, ever, ever do this. <laughs> this is my impression of John Wayne if he ever became a stand-up comic. Buenos nachos, scumbags. I just rode my horse in from Las Vegas. And boy, are his balls swollen. Well, here's a little joke for you. What's the difference between a moose and Lawrence Welk's orchestra? On a moose, the horns are up front and the assholes in back. Thank you. Well, here's another little joke for you. What do you call a Mexican with a vasectomy? Dry Martinez. Uh, well, here's another little joke for you. How come they haven't found out a cure for AIDS yet? Can't get those little white laboratory mice to butt fuck each other. <laughs> you hear about the blind skunk that tried to rape a fart? <laughs> a black couple, Mr. and Mrs. Jackson, are sitting at the breakfast room table with their 10 month old kid. All of a sudden, the little kid looks up at Mrs. Jackson and says, Mother, Mr. Jackson looks over and says, hear that, honey? He just said half a word. <laughs> Guy goes into a doctor's office and says, I don't know what's wrong with me, doc, but every time I eat something, it comes out looking the same. I eat a hamburger, it comes out looking like a hamburger. I eat a slice of pizza, it comes out looking like a slice of pizza. 
Pepperonis are even in the same spot. <laughs> what the hell am I going to do, Doc? Doc says, eat shit. <laughs> well, here's another little joke for you. What do you call a girl that can suck up a golf ball through a drinking straw? Darling. <laughs> You're about the prostitute that went on a fishing trip with seven guys and came home with a big red snapper. <laughs> oh, fuck you, I don't write this shit. <laughs> the girl that got eaten by the shark in Jaws? How'd they find out she had dandruff? Found her head and shoulders on the beach. <laughs> you don't like my jokes? Come up here and tell me personally and I'll rip off your head and shit in your neck. <laughs> don't make no difference to me. Three old guys are sitting in a rest home. One guy's 70, one's 80, and the third one's 90. Well, they're sitting around talking one day, and the 70-year-old says, boy, I wish I could take a healthy piss again. 80-year-old says, I got no problem doing that. I just wish I could take a healthy shit again. Well, the 90-year-old looks over and says, every morning at 7 o'clock, I take a healthy piss. About 9.20 on the button, I take a healthy shit. I just wish I could wake up before noon. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody here, uh, how many of you know who Jack Nicholson is? I think if uh, Jack Nicholson couldn't get a great job as an actor in a film, and the only job they offered him was to host a television kitty show. This is how I think Jack would handle the job. <laughs> All right, you little turd droppers. <laughs> Now, before we start to tape the McMurphy to the Clown Show, <laughs> Uncle Jack wants to talk to you kids about a few things that are starting to piss him off. <laughs> Last week, we had what we call share period, and little Susie Thompson said that she wanted to come up and show us all her little pussy. Uncle Jack thought she's talking about a goddamn cat. <laughs> so remember, kids, if this stuff continues to happen, Uncle Jack's gonna have to put his hands around your little necks and squeeze real hard <laughs> till your fucking eyes pop out. Well, I gotta be getting off now. <laughs> My mom gave me that joke. <laughs> How many of you uh, know who Jimmy Stewart is? This is my impression of James Stewart if he ever decided to do the Beatles song, Blackbird. Piece of shit. <laughs> Goddamn fucking piece of shit. I, I, <clears throat> I got a good mind to take this guitar back to the man I bought it from and ram it up his fucking ass. <laughs> Th this end first. <clears throat> Unless, it, unless he's got hemorrhoids, and that, that'd be more fun. Hey, 
Thank you. You've been great. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming into our club. Well, that's, that's I line up for this evening, and I hope you weren't offended here by the show. Uh, if you were offended and, and you stayed until the end, then you were a dummy. <laughs> so drive carefully and come again. See you next time. Good night, folks. Yeah. Appreciate that. All right, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.